a key to observing the classic genotypic and phenotypic patterns when performing a set of monohybrid crosses over two generations is knowing that the individuals used in the parental generation are true breeding for the trait of interest, where the term true breeding is simply another way of saying that both individuals are homozygous for the trait. A technique called a test cross can be used to determine the genotype of any trait that exhibits Mendelian patterns of inheritance. A test cross is a good way to determine the alleles an individual possesses when there is any doubt about that individual's genotype. A well-studied model organism that can be used to illustrate how a test cross works is the fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster. Like the peas Mendel studied, a number of genetic mutations have been identified that affect visible phenotypes. One of these, called vestigial wing, causes individuals to grow very small, poorly formed wings. Since genes like this are discovered through the phenotypes caused by the mutations, it is common to name the gene after the mutation. So the gene causing this mutation is called the vestigial wing gene. The allele carrying this mutation is recessive, making it conducive to the type of analysis Mendel performed on his peas. Presence of the wild type allele allow an individual to form normal wings. Since the gene's name is vestigial wing, the dominant wild type allele is identified with a capital V and the recessive mutant allele with a lowercase v. Since the little v allele is recessive, the only genotype that will cause the mutant phenotype is the homozygous recessive or little v, little v. The fact that the phenotype gives a clear indication of an individual's genotype means that any fly with vestigial wings can be used as a true breeding individual in the parental round of a monohybrid cross. Things are not as straightforward with a fly with normal wings because two genotypes, homozygous dominant and heterozygous, will both exhibit the wild type normal wing phenotype. This is where the idea of a test cross becomes useful. To set up a test cross, an individual with the wild type phenotype is crossed with one exhibiting the mutant phenotype. Again, due to the recessive nature of the mutation, we know the genotype of the mutant. The test cross will allow us to determine the genotype of the other individual, that is whether it has two wild type alleles, or is heterozygous with the wild type allele masking the presence of a recessive vestigial wing allele. Before actually performing the cross, punted squares can be used to predict the possible outcomes. There are two. If the wild type parent is homozygous, it will give every offspring a wild type allele, resulting in all of the offspring being heterozygous and exhibiting the wild type phenotype. If, on the other hand, this parent is heterozygous, it will give half its offspring the wild type allele and half the recessive allele. Since the other parent gives all of the offspring the vestigial allele, half the offspring will be heterozygous and have normal wings, and half of the offspring will have two copies of the vestigial allele giving them the vestigial wing phenotype. While the punted square only displays the predicted patterns, the beauty of working with organisms like peas and fruit flies is that they are easy to breed, have relatively short generation times, and produce many offspring each time they are crossed. So by actually performing the cross, we can determine the genotype of the wild type parent. It is not unusual to get as many as 200 offspring from a single fruit fly cross. If a cross between one individual expressing the mutant phenotype and one with the wild type phenotype produce nothing but wild type offspring, we can be sure that the wild type parent is homozygous for the gene, carrying two copies of the wild type allele. If on the other hand, half of the offspring are wild type and the other half have vestigial wings, we would know that the parent with the wild type wings is heterozygous for the gene, having one copy of the wild type and one vestigial allele. The laws of probability are not perfect, so actual crosses like this rarely produce exactly 50% of each phenotype, but because of the random nature of Mendel's principle of segregation, they usually come pretty close. To give a real example, students crossed a homozygous recessive individual with a fly exhibiting the wild type phenotype, but an unknown genotype. Of the first 180 flies that hatched from the cross, 96 had the wild type phenotype and 84 had vestigial wings. This ratio of 53% to 47% is close enough to 50-50 to prove that the wild type parent is heterozygous for this trait. If you found this video helpful, please consider sharing it and giving it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment with any questions or suggestions, and if you want to keep up with the content here at Science Primer, click the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.